All right. Welcome back to Chapter 9.3, Day 2. And today we're going to be looking at inference for means and specifically paired data. Well, comparative studies are more convincing than single sample investigations. Uh, for that reason, one sample inference is less common than comparative inference. Study designs that involve making two observations on the same individual, matched pairs data, uh, or one observation on each of two similar individuals results in paired data. When paired data result from measuring the same quantitative variable twice, as in the job satisfaction study, we can make comparisons by analyzing the differences in each pair. If the conditions for inference are met, remember our sin in the second box, we can use one sample T procedures to perform inference about the mean difference. These methods are sometimes called paired T procedures. So let's look at an example. Researchers designed an experiment to study the effects of caffeine withdrawal. They recruited 11 volunteers who were diagnosed as being caffeine dependent to serve as subjects. Each subject was barred from coffee, colas, and other substances with caffeine for the duration of the experiment. During one two-day period, subjects took capsules containing their normal caffeine intake. During another two-day period, they took placebo capsules. The order in which the subjects took caffeine and the placebo was randomized. So again, that's going to be important that uh, the order was randomized uh, in, the, in regards to the subjects on how they took the caffeine or the placebo. At the end of each two-day period, a test for depression was given to all 11 subjects. And the researchers wanted to know if being deprived of caffeine would lead to an increase in depression. So here's some scores uh, from that. We can see subject number one, uh, their depression score was five with the caffeine. Uh, with the placebo, the depression score was 16. So we see a positive difference when we take the placebo depression score minus the caffeine score. Uh, so it does seem to go up for a uh, person, their, de their depression score seems to go up uh, when they don't have their caffeine. And it appears to be that's the case with most of these scores, the way they go, that the subject appears to be more depressed without their caffeine. We got one subject here that's not, but kind of a interesting score right down there in itself. Anyway, here's the problem. Why did researchers randomly assign the order in which subjects received placebo and caffeine? Well, the researchers wanted to be able to conclude that any statistical significant change in depression score is due to the treatments themselves and not some other variable. One obvious concern is the order of the treatments. So suppose that the caffeine were given to all subjects during the first two-day period. What if the weather were nicer on these two days and the, during the uh, second two-day period when all subjects were given a placebo? Again, you want to have that randomized uh, assignment uh, you know, to eliminate some of those other variables. So otherwise, researchers want to be able to tell if a large increase in the mean depression score is due to the difference in weather or due to the treatments or some other factor. Random assignment of the caffeine and placebo to the two time periods in the experiment should help ensure that no other variable is systematically affecting subject's response. In other words, where you are limiting the lurking variables. That's what randomization will help us do. So here's the problem. We're going to carry out a test to investigate the researcher's question. So we'll start with our state, our first box in the upper left-hand corner. We'll state, if caffeine deprivation has no effect on depression, then we would expect the actual mean difference in the depression scores to be zero. In other words, if their score uh, was the same for the placebo as it was for the caffeine, there'd be no difference. They'd be equal. So therefore, we want to test these hypotheses, uh, that the null hypothesis is that the mean difference, and that's what the mu sub d means here, what the mu, mu sub d is. There's the, the mean difference between the two isn't anything. There's no difference. 
What we're trying to show is that the, the difference did go up, that the placebo, remember we had this as uh, the placebo minus the caffeine. So we can see that the depression score was up, was positive. Okay. Because no significance level is given, again, if it's not given, this is the most common significance level, a 5% significance level, which equates to a 95% confidence level. It is the most common. In our second box in our plan, we're going to uh, see if the conditions are met. So we should be able to see if we can do a paired t-test for the mean difference. We'll check for randomness, um, and we did randomly assign the treatments to the subjects. So we do have random assignment. The 10% condition, uh, we aren't sampling, you know, so it really isn't necessary to check the 10% condition. Uh, each individual uh, in the population or the uh, sample, each individual in the sample should be independent um, of each other. Okay. And then our third thing, our uh, uh, normality. Uh, so we don't know whether the actual distribution of difference in depression scores is normal. Uh, with such a small sample size of n equaling 11, uh, we'll need to examine the data. We'll need to look at some graphs uh, to determine if this small sample size, if we have uh, a outliers or extreme skewness. So here are a couple different graphs we could do. We could do a histogram of the data. Um, I don't really see a, uh, a lot of skewness to this or outliers. Same thing, we could use a, a box and whiskers plot. And again, I don't see uh, you know really strong skewness. There's some slight skewness to the right. Um, I don't see any outliers because I don't see uh, the dots out here. Um, my, our normal probability plot, yeah, there might be a little skewness to the right. If I draw a line uh, through here through these dots, you can see that there's dots over here on the right side of this line. Uh, so there might be a little skewness to the right as indicated in the previous problems as well too. So, um, and as it says here, this program is in a regular shape with so few values. The box plot shows some right skewness but no outliers. And the normal probability plot is slightly curved, indicating some slight skewness. But with no outliers or strong skewness, the t-procedure should be pretty accurate. In the do part, in our third box in the lower left, uh, uh, we can do our, our mathematics for this. Uh, we can also get this uh, test statistic uh, from our t-distribution table. And uh, looking up that value, off of an alpha of 0 0.05 or a confidence level, a confidence level of 95%. Uh, we'd also have degrees of freedom uh, of 10. We should be able to look up onto our chart and find a p-value of 0 0.0027, so pretty small. Um, we can also use technology, and we'll demonstrate that in class uh, to how to use the calculator, so uh, be patient, we'll wait to see that. Um, this is uh, actually a window uh, from uh, TI-84, um, so uh, we won't do that. Um, we'll have to look at our Inspire calculator. Well, and then our fourth box, we'd have our conclusion, and we're basically saying because that p-value uh, is 0 0.027, uh, it is very, very small, and it's smaller than, if we compare it to our alpha of 0.05, it's certainly smaller than the alpha. So we'd reject the null, uh, reject that there is uh, no difference. Um, just going back to make a touch base on this too, uh, you would, for this test statistic, make sure you do draw your t distribution uh, in finding that value here. There, our test stick is at 3.53, and then we're looking at that area that's above there, and that's what that 0 0.027 is from that t chart. So uh, making sure that we indicate that as well too. Okay. So, uh, we've got, this was the mathematical statement, our connection to our data, and why we reject. Uh, so, uh, we want to put it in context. So, uh, we would say we have convincing evidence that the true mean difference between the placebo and the caffeine and depression score is positive for subjects like these. I would even further go on to say uh, that there does seem to be some evidence 
uh, that the depression scores are, uh, are higher without the caffeine. All right, so carry out a significance test is often quite simple. We're going to look at uh, you know how we use tests wisely. So uh, you know, so here are some points to keep in mind when using or interpreting significance tests. Well, hello there, little pink flamingo. So one question you need to do is just ask yourself, how large a sample do I need? Well, smaller significance levels, alpha you know, values are like 0 0.01 or even smaller, require stronger evidence to reject an hypothesis. We need some real small p-values uh, if we're going to have um, you know, small uh, significance levels. Higher power gives a better chance of detecting a difference when it really exists, and we know that from our previous slides. At any significance level in desired power, detecting a small difference between the null and alternative parameter values require, requires a larger sample than detecting a large difference. So again, that just goes back to say, you know, make sure your sample size uh, is large. And the, large more, the more you sample, the better your uh, study is going to be. Statistical significance and practical importance. When a null hypothesis can be rejected at the usual levels, you know, can reject at, these are the usual alpha levels, there's good evidence of a difference, but that may, difference may be very small. When large samples are available, even tiny deviations from the null hypothesis be significant. Uh, so in other words, uh, as we're kind of uh, comparing between these two, sometimes we could, uh, we could reject the null here, but then fail to reject it here because our p-value is somewhere in between there like that. You know, we're going to want really strong evidence, so we're really hoping for small p-values. And what we can do is help that by making larger samples. Okay. And again, beware of multiple analysis. Statistical significance ought to mean that you have found a difference that you were looking for. The reason behind statistical significance works well if you decide what difference you are seeking, design a study to search for it, and use a significance test to weigh the evidence you get. In other settings, significance may have little meaning. And here we go. This is a summary of section 9.3. You should be able to state and check. This is our second box of our uh, four-step process, looking at establishing an SRS, the 10% condition, and then also normality. We should be able to perform a significance test about a population mean. So in other words, a mu, and again, we're carrying a significance test. So the significance test means that we are looking for a p-value. Sometimes we have to, if we're doing it at a population mean, we have to determine, are we using a z or a t? And again, if we don't know the population standard deviation, that's where we use our t-star. Using confidence intervals to draw conclusions, again, looking to see uh, does our confidence interval for our lower bound to our upper bound, uh, is our null hypothesis contained in there? If it is, we fail to reject. If it's outside, then we would reject. And then we should be able to perform a significance test about a mean difference. So again, this is where we have uh, two sets of data, or maybe the same person doing two different things, and we're finding that difference, you know, the difference between like a mu uh, of a uh, placebo versus the mu uh, of, uh, you know, an actual um, study with caffeine or something like we did in the problem. Uh, in other words, we're finding that mean difference so we can use one sample t-testing. All right, well, section 9.3, we are done now with chapter 9, and you should be able to finish these last few problems uh, here from chapter 9, and I wish you luck and I wish you skill, and uh, we'll see you in chapter 10.